So when I'm working with woods that are uh, prone to tear out, like tiger maple or quarter sawn white oak, I'll usually turn to a low angle jack plane like this, which is a bevel up plane. It's like a block plane. And rather than using the standard angle, I'll have a micro bevel of 45 degrees, sometimes even higher. And the 45 degrees plus the 12 degree bed angle gives you an effect of 57 degree angle of attack into the wood. And that super high angle makes it harder to push, but it makes it so that you get little to no tear out. It's approaching what a card scraper does. Here I'll show you on this piece of tiger maple and I'll finish planing it the correct way. If you look, I've drawn in the grain lines going like this. So my plane is coming in this way and I'm getting a, uh, a nice cut. And I've already planed this face going the right way. So now I have a nice surface here, no tear out, but then I flip it 180 degrees, nothing changes, and I go over the same wood, the same surface, and if you take a look, I have no tear out. I might have a little bit different sheen, but that's because I'm coming at it from a different angle, but there's no tear out, and that's the point. Okay, so I'll finish this. And going either way, I'm not getting any difference. So I've been doing that for years, but then I decided, well, doing an edge, I'm always breaking these edges. And what happens lots of times is if you're doing that edge, that's the intersection of that face with that edge and you have grain direction that can be going all over the place. So you can get a tear out in that case too. And that's the last place you want tear out. You want a nice smooth, thin chamfer there and you don't want to have anything messing you up. So I took my um, low angle block plane, a Lee Nielsen 102, and I did exactly the same 45 degree micro bevel and this I keep specifically for breaking an edge here like this. I also use it for leveling inlay. If you do a string inlay on a leg, the last thing you want is to tear out that inlay. So this does a great job of that. And the grain direction is not an issue. And then I'll come and do uh, all four. And I'll never, I'll never leave a sharp, sharp edge. I'll always break it like that. And then I'll hit it once or twice with a uh, piece of 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. And that edge there is still crisp, but it doesn't feel sharp to you. You should be able to feel a nice, smooth surface that still is crisp.